Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start part two of interchapter C, stereochemistry and nomenclature. You can see that in the second part, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit more on nomenclature of alkenes. So for nomenclature of alkenes, we're going to have some situations for cis and trans will not work. Just to refresh your memory, cis means having two hydrogens on the same side, as shown on the top left here. Those two hydrogens are the same side of the molecule. And remember that in that, to use the cis terminology, we have to have one hydrogen attached to each carbon. Trans is where the hydrogens are on opposite sides. And again, we have to have one hydrogen attached to each carbon of the alkene. So in the bottom example, you can see that we can't use cis or trans because there are no hydrogens attached to the two carbons of the alkenes. The methyl groups over here are not hydrogens and so they're not equivalent. And so we have to come up with another naming system for this type of molecule. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the EZ system. And in the EZ system, we are going to be determining the priority of the groups attached to each carbon of the alkene. If they're on the same side, we're gonna get the Z configuration. And if they're on opposite sides, we're gonna get the E configuration. Okay, so how do we determine priority? Fortunately, you already know how to determine priority if you've done R and S. We're gonna use the same methodology for determining R and S with the EZ system. So we're gonna do atomic number first, and then after atomic number, if you have equivalent atomic number, we're gonna see what's attached. So you already know how to do this. Let's do some examples. So over here, we have a molecule that could be named cis, right? Because it has two hydrogens on the same side. Why are, we, why are we also able to name this molecule Z? So let's look at the priority of the group. So on carbon two, carbon two is right here, we have a carbon and a hydrogen attached. The higher priority group is going to be the carbon because carbon has a higher atomic number. Now let's look and see what's attached to carbon three. Carbon three over here on the right is attached to a carbon and a hydrogen. Again, the carbon is the higher priority group because it has a higher atomic number. Those two groups are on the same side, so that's why we get Z. Let's look over here at the E example. In the E example, we're gonna look at the left carbon. The left carbon has a carbon and a hydrogen attached. Carbon wins. On the right carbon over here, we have a carbon and a hydrogen attached the carbon wins. In this case, those groups are on opposite sides, so we get E. Notice that this can also be called trans. And when you're entering these problems in sampling, you can choose to either use the cis-trans system for these examples or the EZ system. Okay, let's look at some more complicated examples now. Let's work on this one on the bottom left. So first of all, we're gonna start with the carbon on the left side here. Now what's attached to it? It has a hydrogen and a carbon attached. Carbon is going to win in terms of priority because it has the higher atomic number. Next, we're gonna look at the carbon on the right. This carbon over here has a carbon attached and a carbon attached. So what's gonna win? The top carbon is connected to a CH2 group, so that is gonna beat out the CH3 group, so that's going to win our priority. Those are on opposite sides, so that's how we get E. Let's go into our next example. So in this case, this is kind of interesting because we have two alkenes. As we're looking at this molecule though, notice that the first alkene over here on the left, we can't name using either cis-trans or EZ because it doesn't have different groups on this carbon. On this left carbon here, we have two hydrogens attached, and when two hydrogens are attached to the same carbon, we don't have to worry about cis-trans or EZ. Or anytime two of the same groups are attached, we don't have to worry about cis-trans or EZ. So in fact, when we're looking at the term butadiene, 
it's a 1,3-butadiene. If we go through and number the carbons, carbon 1 is here, carbon 2 is there, and then we have 3 and 4. So we can see that we have a diene at 1 and a diene at 3. The only one that we have to worry about for EZ is the diene that's at carbon 1 or between carbons 1 and 2. Okay, so we figured that out. Let's go ahead and do our priority. So carbon 1, we have a hydrogen and a bromine attached to carbon 1. The bromine gets priority. On carbon 2, we have a CH group and a CH group attached to carbon 2. So now we need to determine which one is going to win. You'll notice that the top carbon is connected to two carbons and the bottom carbon, labeled carbon 3 here, is also connected to a carbon with a double bond, which kind of counts as two carbons. So this is an interesting one because what we learned here is even if you have a double bond, it's going to count as two carbons and it's going to break the tie. So in this case, it counts as, a, as two bonds to a carbon and then it also breaks the tie between an isopropyl group. These groups are on opposite sides, so we have E stereochemistry. Let's look at the last example. The last example, we have on our left-hand carbon here, a carbon and a hydrogen. Carbon wins because it has the higher atomic number. On the right-hand carbon, we have a carbon and a carbon. Because those are both carbons, we have to see what's attached. Bottom carbon over here is attached to an O. Top carbon is attached to two O's. Top carbon wins. Those two carbons are on the same side. So we're gonna get Z configuration. An important thing to note is that when we've gone through all of this, again, we have to have two different groups attached to both carbons in order to do EZ. And if we have a hydrogen attached to each carbon, that's the only situation where we can use cis and trans. Let's look at some more complicated examples. So over here, we can go through and we can look at this molecule, and let's talk about how we would do our numbering. So if we number this molecule from the left, one, two, three, we will have our double bond at position three. If we number from the right, one, two, we will have our double bond at position two. So two is better than three, so we're gonna number from the right. Okay, so we have seven carbons in our parent chain, and that means that we're going to have a heptane. At carbon two, don't forget that we have a hydrogen attached there, so let's draw that hydrogen in. We're gonna go ahead and draw that hydrogen in. And let's determine the stereochemistry at the alkene at carbon two. So you'll notice that we have a carbon attached and a hydrogen attached, and we're looking at this carbon on the right. Remember, that's a CH3 group. And on the left, we have a hydrogen. Let's go ahead and determine our atomic number. Carbon is going to win in this situation. Now let's look at carbon three. Carbon three has an N attached to the right and a carbon attached to the left. The nitrogen has higher atomic number than the carbon, so it's gonna win in terms of priority. That means the stereochemistry at that position, they're on the same side, so that's going to be Z. Okay, let's go ahead now and look at the diene that's at, uh, between positions four and five. So again, it's helpful if you're struggling with these to draw in your hydrogens and make sure that you're drawing them in at the correct angle. Remember, they need to be at 120 degrees approximately. So at carbon four, what do we have attached to carbon four? We have a hydrogen and we have a carbon attached to carbon four. The carbon is going to win in terms of priority. On carbon five, we have a hydrogen and a carbon. The carbon is going to win in terms of priority. These groups are on opposite sides, so we have E stereochemistry. Let's check and see if we did that correctly. And look, we did. The other cool thing that you're seeing here is that we have to indicate the Z 
stereochemistry to be at position two because that was where that alkene started. And at position four, that was our E stereochemistry. Okay, let's do one more example. This one's kind of fun because now we have some RS stereochemistry as well as EZ stereochemistry to worry about. So first of all, let's go ahead and number. If we number from the right, we're not gonna get anything until one, two, three, four. So we number one and number from the left. That's gonna put our alkyne at position one. Okay, so we have seven carbons. So that means that we have a heptane, and because we have an alkene and an alkyne, that's gonna mean that we have a heptene, a heptene ine. Now we need to do our stereochemistry about the double bond. Let's go ahead and add in our hydrogen. And now we can go ahead and determine our priorities. So on carbon three, we have a carbon and a carbon attached. The top carbon over here is connected to another carbon, so that's going to win in terms of priority. On carbon four, we have a hydrogen and a carbon attached. The carbon is going to win in terms of priority. These are on the same side, so we are going to have Z stereochemistry. Now we need to worry about what's going on on carbon five there. So let's go back and clear things up just a little bit and add in our hydrogen. Remember when you're drawing in the hydrogen to add the hash and the wedge lines right next to each other. And let's determine our priority about carbon five. So we know that the fluorine there is priority one and the hydrogen is four. Now let's look at our other two carbons. On the right we have a CH2, on the left we have a CH. The CH is double bonded to another carbon and that's gonna beat out the carbon that's single bonded to that methyl group. So this is going to be our priority two because it's got a double bond to two carbons and on the right we have our priority three. Okay, now if you're looking at these, you're probably thinking, oh, I'm gonna go one to two to three and I'm gonna get S stereochemistry. But you have to remember that hydrogen group is sticking out in front of us, so everything gets flipped. So even though it, it's looking like we're gonna have S stereochemistry, it's actually gonna be R because the hydrogen group is sticking out at us. And you can imagine yourself if you're doing a model, flipping the whole molecule upside down to determine the stereochemistry. So if we put everything together, that's gonna give us R for the stereo center at position five. And notice that we didn't have to put a number there because there's only one. And then we have our Z stereochemistry at carbon three. And then we have our, uh, we remember that we also had to specify where the ene and the ine are in our naming because our double bond is at position three and our ine is at position one. So this represents the end of the video for interchapter C. You're gonna to wanna to stop the video at this point and do your clicker questions. Don't forget to check out the study guide for this lecture. Remember that what we covered in this lecture was how to do the RS system as well as the EZ system. So make sure that you can do both of these things when you're studying for our next quiz.